This is the HOCN Lewis structure. We have a total of 16 valence electrons for HOCN. Hydrogen always goes on the outside of Lewis structures, and when we look at the oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon, carbon is going to be the least electronegative. So let's put that in the center. We'll put a nitrogen over here, an O, and then right here we'll put the H. In this case, I pretty much followed the way the structure was written above. But it does make sense. Carbon's the least electronegative. It should be in the center, and hydrogens are always on the outside. We'll take and put two valence electrons between atoms to form chemical bonds. We've used six valence electrons. Complete the octet for nitrogen. Eight, ten, twelve. Let's go back to the oxygen. Fourteen and sixteen. So we've used all our valence electrons. At this point, the hydrogen has two. The oxygen and the nitrogen, they both have eight. But the carbon here in the center only has four. So we're going to have to share valence electrons. Since nitrogen is least electronegative here, I think I'll take two from the nitrogen and share them with the carbon to form a double bond. So the nitrogen still has eight valence electrons, but now the carbon has six. So let's take another two from the nitrogen and share them with the carbon to form a triple bond. Nitrogen still has eight. We're still using the 16 valence electrons we have for the HOCN Lewis structure, but now the carbon has eight as well. So we've completed the octets on all of the atoms. If we take a look at our formal charges, we'll find that there's zero for each atom in this Lewis structure. If we were to take and use a triple bond between the oxygen and the carbon, we wouldn't have formal charges of zero. And that would mean that it's a less likely Lewis structure. So this is the best Lewis structure for HOCN. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.